According to Richard Delgado and Gene Stefanczyk, who are some of the founders of critical race theory, critical race theory essentially holds four basic tenets. Tenet number one is that racism is ordinary, not aberrational. It is the way that society, these are direct quotes, this is the usual way society does business, the common everyday experience of most people of color in this country. Second, that these systems of oppression serve, quote, important purposes, both psychic and material, for the dominant group, namely white Americans. Third, that race and races are the product of social thoughts and relations. So all groupings are essentially arbitrary, but they're created by white people to harm other people. And finally, that minority status, quote, brings with it a presumed competence to speak about race and racism. Meaning that if you're a person of color, you get to speak about race and racism and nobody else does. Okay, when you take that together, what that really means is that all inequality is inequity. It means any discrepancy can be chalked up to systemic racism without ever having to explain how the discrepancy occurred. You never have to actually point to a problematic policy in order to explain why the discrepancy exists. You just point to the discrepancy, and this in and of itself means that all the institutions are bad. Right? Everything good is fruit of the poisonous tree. All those institutions were built by rich white men who were seeking to enshrine their own racism in the way the institutions work. Right? Boiled down into less nuanced form, CRT sounds precisely like Ibram X. Kendi. Okay? And this is a way of reducing risk in how you think about yourself. It's a way of reducing your mental risk. Now, here is the thing. Our aversion to risk, obviously it applies across the board. It applies to finance. We, we outsource nearly all policy to the Federal Reserve at this point. We have a cadre of experts who are supposed to decide how much your dollar is worth and also keep down unemployment. We outsource all COVID policy to supposed experts who happen to screw it up six ways from Sunday while maybe funding gain-of-function research in Wuhan. <laughs> all these experts fail. And that failure makes us angry because we have been lied to. We've been told we can hand over everything to the experts and they will push a magic button and they will fix everything. But, they, but they're lying to us. That's not the case. And when they fail, they have two alternatives. They can admit it or they can get us to turn on each other. And so when the experts who have promised us they will mitigate all risks, when that doesn't work, instead they blame you. They blame, tell you to blame your neighbor. It's your neighbor who's, who's standing in our way. And so my call today is when you get beyond the coddling, what you realize is that the coddling in the end is a shield for people in power to never have to be answerable. If they can promise you that they will mitigate all your risks, even if they fail, they will just blame the person sitting next to you. And if you go along with them, you will give them more power and more power and more power, but you won't lead a fulfilled life. We actually have to re-embrace risk on a personal level and on a societal level. We have to take the risk of freely exchanging ideas because that's where innovation happens. We have to take the risk of being able to invest and reap the benefits of that risk. We have to take the risks of for example, in our personal relationship, in a personal relationship, getting married is a risk. It is foregoing a current benefit for a future gain. Right? You, are, you are foreclosing all sorts of other possibilities because you have chosen to make a life with this one person. That is a risk. Marriage is a risk. Having kids is a risk. You don't know what they're going to turn out like. Right? You really don't. And it does vary day to day on what you think the trajectory looks like. But the thing is that those risks make life worth living. The risk might pay off, or maybe you fail and you learn something more deep about yourself. Maybe you learn from the failure and you do better the next time. Or maybe it's just that you've strengthened your own character because you've made free choices in a free way, which is what makes us human in the end. Every decision you make is a risk. The biggest risk of all, of course, is the decision to be free and to take responsibility for your own choices. That's a major risk. But if you take that risk, you become a better and a stronger human being, a more contributing human being, a more valuable human being. You feel better about yourself. When we discard risk, we discard meaning. When we are coddled, we discard our own ability to be a fully adult human being. And here's the, here's the dirty little secret. No matter how much we try to discard the risk, no matter how much we try to set up institutions that mitigate against the risk, no matter how many boxes we draw against the people who sit next to us in society, hoping that this will mitigate our risk, you can't actually discard risk. It's inevitable because reality entails risk, just as it always did, just as when we were lizard brains wandering in the jungle, there's risk now too. And we can build dams against the risk, and the waters can pile up behind those dams, and then eventually they will blow right through the dam, and when that risk materializes, it'll be a lot bigger and a lot worse than the tiny risks that we have been avoiding all the way along this process. When that dam bursts, it destroys civilizations. Small risks can be channeled, small risks can be withstood, when you build up entire bulwarks and edifices of holding back risk, and then the risk materializes, it swamps everything. It's a huge civilizational mistake. Reality always wins in the end. In fact, I root for reality, because when you root for reality, you're rooting for people to learn how to deal with reality, which again is how we lead fulfilled lives. So we can all do that. We can choose to live free rather than coddled. 
It'll make us better people, more open people, more understanding people. And when we do that, I think that uh, not only will we be saving the country and saving the civilization, we'll be saving ourselves.